there are only two things that you need in order to sell your digital products successfully. What are those two things? Well, today in this video, we're gonna talk about that and I'm gonna to try to help you simplify your digital product process so you can finally start making money selling your digital products. Let's get into it. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Alyssa and this channel is all about starting and growing your digital product business. If you have ever tried to create a digital product before but you started to overcomplicate the whole process, then this video is for you because today we're talking about the two things, the only two things that you need in order to sell your digital products successfully. And we're gonna try to simplify some of the things that might be making you overcomplicate things in your brain. So let's get into it. So the two things that you need in order to sell your digital products successfully is you need the right offer and you need that offer in front of the right people. So the right target audience. Now let's break this down because I think that we get confused between product and offer. So let's talk about the difference. Your product is the actual physical or digital thing that you're sending your customer. And your offer is the result that your product creates for that customer. So let's look at an example. My student Amanda sells digital and physical props and tools for online teachers. And they use these online tools in their online classroom. So the actual product she's selling are the digital and physical props and tools. The offer is she's making online teaching easier for her target audience. So what she offers is an easier way to teach online through the lens of her props and tools that she sells. So with that in mind, she doesn't need to only sell props and tools. She can sell mini courses, she can sell workshops, eBooks, she can sell all different types of things really, as long as she's helping these online teachers and she's making their job easier because that's really her offer and that's her niche, what she's all about. So Amanda is successful because she has the right offer and she's making sure it's in front of the right target audience. Now let's talk about target audience because what I see is a lot of sellers who try to come up with their target audience and it's more of a flowery description of a person they wish to serve. So they might say, my target audience, they're filled with women that are in their 20s, they're ambitious, they have big dreams, and they love to cuddle up with a book at night and get lost in their favorite novel. So that is really flowery and that doesn't really help me find my target audience because it's more of an idea and traits that they have. But what I have found to be best, especially when you're just starting out, is to find a target audience that you can give a label to. So Amanda, she helps VIP kid teachers. I help Etsy sellers. And the reason why this is so helpful is because when you can give your target audience a label and it's specific, then you can go find them and you can go survey them, learn more about what they're struggling with, what their goals are, and it's going to help you make a product that is precisely for them and it's gonna make your offer better. And you're gonna know exactly who they are and where they are so you can present that offer to them. And I don't want you to think that if you choose a certain target audience that it's going to exclude other people that are outside of that target audience because that's just not true. I chose to focus on Etsy sellers, but people that are business owners in general or have handmade shops off of Etsy, even Poshmark sellers still buy my thank you cards that I specifically made for Etsy sellers. So this is just so your marketing is precise and you have the right offer for the right people so you can get actual data, but that doesn't mean that other people outside of this target audience is not going to buy from you. They definitely will. And if you wanna learn more about finding your target audience, then I'm going to link down below my free 60 minute training. One of the first things we talk about in that training is your target audience and your niche. So if you need more help on this, definitely check out that video. Now, a lot of people come to me and say they want to start their digital product business, but they don't know how to pick a product. And oftentimes they tell me it's because they're multi-passionate. And I get it, I was multi-passionate too. So if you are struggling with this, you have so many ideas and you can't figure out what you want to move forward with, definitely check out this passive product workbook that I created. It's gonna help you map out a lot of things and get your thoughts out on paper. 
and really hone in on which digital product is going to be the most profitable for you financially and emotionally. And one of the things you're gonna map out in that workbook are your transformations. So your personal point A's to your point B's. So things that you have accomplished and overcome in your life. Now the reason why this is so important is because something we call a unique value proposition. And it's one of the things that I teach in Marketing for Makers Academy because it really is important in order to create an awesome digital product that is not a dime a dozen, but that's gonna sell really well. So the problem with not having a UVP and kind of just making whatever you think is going to make you money or based on what's trending is that you're not gonna be bringing anything unique to the table. And what you might find yourself doing is actually taking too much inspiration from people on Etsy. So it is really gonna be beneficial for you to map out some of your transformations so you could bring something unique and special to your digital product but you're also going to find that you're gonna enjoy your business a lot more. So this is highly suggested and in my opinion, necessary. Now that doesn't mean that you need to make the most perfect product right now. What you can do is create something called an MVP, a minimum viable product. And I've talked about this MVP before on my channel and basically it's your first iteration of your digital product and you make it to the best of your ability and then you put it out there and then you get the feedback from people, you see what people are asking for and by looking at the data, you'll know how to improve that digital product and every time you improve it, you can increase the price and you'll make more sales as well because it's exactly what people are asking for. So you're improving your offer over time as you learn more and more about what people really need. Now, creating this minimal viable product is to get you into action ASAP and to start testing the market right away. This is also great if you are multi-passionate and you went through the passive product workbook and you're between two or three products still. If you really can't decide, then I would just say make a bunch of MVP products in the different niches you're wanting to explore and go ahead, create them and publish them so the quicker you get into action, the quicker you can weed out what you don't want to do, who you don't want to serve, and the quicker you can figure out what you do want to do and who you want to serve in the long run. Now, a lot of people also get caught up on design skills. So just to let you know that you don't necessarily need design skills in order to start your digital product business. If you're gonna create an informational digital product like an e-course or an ebook, there are templates you can purchase and then you just fill out the information and then you could sell that ebook or that e-course. But if you're thinking of creating templates, planners, worksheets, etc., you don't necessarily need to be a designer and different products call for different levels of design skills. So if you're creating Instagram post templates, for example, you might need a little bit of design skill, but this is nothing that you can't master in Canva. I definitely suggest Canva. They have a great database that actually teaches you how to design in Canva. I'll link that down below in the description box so you can get practicing. Also, some digital products require zero design skills. Maybe your digital product would be better in a spreadsheet. So obviously you still have to do the research. What does your target audience want? What do they expect? What's gonna work? But not all digital products mean that you have to be this amazing designer. So I wasn't and I sell digital products successfully. Do you need an audience first before selling your digital product? So I talk more about this in this video. I'll link it down below as well. But basically, you have informational digital products like ebooks and e-courses, and then you have resource digital products like templates, planners, workbooks, etc. So if you're selling on a third-party platform like Etsy or Creative Market, and you're selling a resource digital product, or just a digital product that people are actually searching for, and you can do this by looking in Marmalade or just by seeing what other people are selling on Etsy. And if they're selling what you're thinking of selling successfully, then most likely you don't need an audience first. That's the beauty of these third party platforms that have a search engine is you can just jump into creating your digital product 
and it will sell as long as the offer is what your target audience is looking for. But of course, having an audience filled with people that want your offer is always going to help you do better, make more sales and grow your business because you're going to learn a lot from the people in your audience. You're really going to understand what they want and you're going to be able to make bigger and better products. So if you want to scale your digital product business to five figures a month, I do suggest that you start building an audience, but also know that you don't need to necessarily. You can grow volume wise or you can grow value wise. So volume wise would be you love to create templates of all sorts and you get to know your target audience well and you just create a lot of templates to support that target audience. Or you can create a template and then over time as you learn more and more about what these people are struggling with, you can solve their problem with bigger digital products like eBooks and e-courses that you can charge a higher price for. So you can grow by volume or you can grow by value. So I decided to grow by value. And this is what allowed me to have a $15,000 plus month last month. So here's how I did it. I first started with my MVP, my simple thank you card template. Then as I listened to feedback and inquiries that people were sending me on Etsy, I improved the product and I increased the price. Then I started collecting email addresses from people in my target audience, Etsy sellers, and I sent them a product validation survey and then I created an even more robust template that was a creative kit. And I, again, increased my price. Then I started creating content on YouTube and Instagram and I was getting more feedback about what people really needed, what they were struggling with as it pertains to being an Etsy seller. And as I was learning and growing my own business and seeing success with my Etsy shop, I created a course, I packaged up all my knowledge. So my business model was starting with an MVP and then I grew my product line based on value. So I increased the amount of value and I increased the price. So either way is fine. You just need to make sure that you have the right offer and that they're in front of the right people. Don't forget to check out that passive product workbook or the 60 minute free training. I'll link both down below and let me know what digital product you're thinking of creating. Let me know if you have any questions. I definitely want to make more videos that are going to help you grow your digital product business. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye guys.